Yesterday we noticed the fact that there are many things that we as Christians should not do. But we also acknowledge the fact that the Bible tells us of some things that as Christians we cannot do. We began yesterday noticing some things that Jesus mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount. And in this sermon, Jesus teaches us about the type of character that one must have in order to be a part of his kingdom. And as we began looking at these four things, we notice that these are four things that our Lord tells us that as Christians we cannot do. First, we acknowledge the fact that as Christians we cannot be hidden. We must always let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. But also in this, we acknowledge the fact that should we as Christians fail to live up to the standard that God has set forth for us in his word, then we will not be able to hide our hypocrisy from the world. We also talked about the fact that we cannot change those things that are out of our control. And Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talks about this from the standpoint of worry. We should not worry about those things that we cannot change. We cannot change those things that we do not have direct control over. Therefore, we need to focus upon those things that we have been called to do, meaning those earthly responsibilities and spiritual obligations that we have. Picking up in our lesson today, we find that we cannot serve two masters. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon, or God and wealth. In this verse, Jesus specifically is talking about material possessions, but the principle that we see here extends far beyond that. Our God is a jealous God, as we're told in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5, and he expects and demands complete devotion and allegiance from us, and we cannot pursue both spiritual and carnal interests. But despite this warning, there are many in the world around us today, and sadly we see many in the church today, that are trying to divide their loyalty. They claim allegiance to Christ, but they try to be loyal to another. Just as the Christians in Corinth were saying, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 12. We see this divided loyalty sometimes with colleges, with publications. Sadly, we even see this from time to time with preachers and even among our family members where there is favoritism and we try to divide ourselves between our loyalties. Our loyalties, though, should end with God. We may be able to divide our loyalty between Christ and another and it not be evident that the other is in agreement with the word of God. But when conflict arises, friends, it will be evident. And who are we going to be loyal to? Are we going to be loyal to Christ, or are we going to be loyal to men? We cannot allow our personal relationships, we cannot allow our personal preferences and opinions to ever hinder our service to Christ then we see that we cannot produce different fruit. In Matthew 7, beginning in verse 17, we read, So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. So then you will know them by their fruits. Good trees produce good fruit. Bad trees produce bad fruit, and they cannot do otherwise. In this context, Jesus was referring specifically to false teachers. If you start with a good seed, being the word of God, then it will yield good fruit. But if you start with bad seed, being false doctrine, then it is going to bring forth bad fruit. If we want to produce Christians and growth among God's people, then we must stick with preaching the gospel. We cannot preach a different or a perverted gospel, as Paul discusses in Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. We cannot teach the opinions and the wisdom of men. To do so will produce something other than Christians. We must always sow the seed 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, it would be nice if this list also included we cannot sin or we cannot be lost, but that's not what the Bible teaches. A Christian can indeed sin and fall from grace, so we must be diligent to remain faithful. Peter did say, you, he, he did say you will never stumble in 2 Peter 1 and verse 10, but this was a conditional statement depending upon our practicing these things which are enumerated in the previous verses. Faith, moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 7. So we need to let these qualities be in us and be always increasing, so that the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to us. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.